I'm here in Silicon Valley at the headquarters of a company called Lucid, who've just unleashed their high-performance, long-range electric car onto the world. They've granted me an exclusive look behind the scenes to come and check out their groundbreaking technology. So let's come and have a look. Now, I've just driven the performance edition of this Lucid Air up the hill at Goodwood, where it laid waste to everything else, basically. It was the fastest production car up the hill. In fact, the only thing that was quicker than this car were the outright racing cars with their big, fat, sticky tires and huge, great big wings. And we were just running on these eco-friendly, long-distance, fuel-saving, tree-hugging tires. The big question that comes out of that is, how the hell is that possible? To find out the answer, you need to get naked. Well, the car does anyway, so we'll get the kit off and have a look underneath. So this is the air without its clothes on. It's got four wheels and a kind of skateboard chassis that holds it all together. And the fundamental difference between this and contemporary EVs, this is a ground up electric car as opposed to a combustion car that's been kind of upgraded into an EV. And that means that the way that they package all the different systems makes all the difference in terms of weight distribution and torsional strength. If you take a closer look inside the car, you can see that the battery packs and the chassis are essentially one. And that gives you two huge advantages when it comes to taking a corner. The first one is the weight is as low in the car as you can possibly get it. That's better for centrifugal forces, gives you a smoother, flatter ride through the corner. The other benefit is that it aids the torsional rigidity of the car. The battery packs basically make up 40% of the stiffness of the chassis. So it's tighter packaging, more space for the occupants and better through the corners. One battery pack. The batteries go in here, you put the lid on, and then hey presto, a stiff structure, and in it goes. Well, it goes in, goes in a bit better than that, but fortunately I don't work in the factory. It goes in there somewhere, I'm definitely not qualified for this. Lucid's secret weapon, though, isn't just packing the car full of batteries. The main difference between one of these and something like a Tesla or lots of the other electric cars is that this one runs on 900 volts, when most of the others run on 400. And that's like the difference between running on rocket fuel instead of diesel. It means you can charge the car faster, you can get 300 miles in there in about 20 minutes, you get more torque at higher speeds, and crucially, it produces less heat. And heat in electronics is basically like kryptonite, strangles the energy and wastes performance. So let's go and check out the motors. Now this is the motor from the original Tesla Model S, perhaps one of the most pivotal developments in the last 100 years of automotive engineering. It was and still is exceptional in its time, although it does look a bit Victorian when you compare it to the new Lucid motor. This weighs half as much and produces 50% more power, and it does that in a number of different ways, all of which are very clever. The benefits of 900 volts again means you can use thinner wires like these ones so you get less heat and resistance. There's also these very innovative jets that fire out cooling oil to keep these wires cool, minimizing resistance, and basically what you've got here is a super efficient unit. Now if you thought that was neat and tidy, wait until you see what powers the wheels because this tiny thing is the differential. And you're probably used to seeing differentials because it's the sort of dangly thing that sits between the axle and hangs there like a big basketball. Anyway, very small, very neat. This can withstand 670 brake horsepower. It's a phenomenal piece of packaging and it fits inside the rotor. Nobody else does that. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I'll keep it. There are two of these motors driving the car, one in the front axle and one in the rear, which effectively means that this car is four wheel drive with a combined power output of 1,050 brake horsepower and a range of 500 miles. Now in conventional four wheel drives, you normally have to have a great big prop shaft joining the two axles together to control what they're doing, but not so with an electric, because this car has a brain that manages the four wheels for you. So the brain in the Lucid is more like a hive mind because this car's got 90 ECUs, little control units that control everything from the door handle to the drivetrain and the power delivery aboard this air. And 70 of those ECUs can be updated, upgraded effectively with software over the air. So the car basically evolves with you over time. So as Lucid develops new technology, they can upload that into the system for a better driving experience. The beauty of those control units though is that the driver is still in control of how they work because there's a range of driving settings that mean that you can tailor make the experience from smooth, which is less power output, more regeneration, very useful for urban areas, but actually even on these canyon roads, I'm a pretty lazy driver. I'm quite happy driving on one pedal, not having to use the brake 
using the battery regen to control the speed into the corner and get a really nice pitch into these twisty corners. Swift is a little bit faster, more power. You can have less regen and have more flow if you like, more conventional driving style, up to sprint, maximum power output, 1,050 horsepower. You've also got the ability to do the launch control to get the maximum zero to 60. And you've got that firmer drive setting. So the suspension, the damper settings can be shored up. There's a solenoid there that can enhance and stiffen the magnetic damping to give you that firmer ride. So since I'm on the Canyon roads, give that a little bit of a whirl and see how it feels. Dead easy. So that's all operated here from this central control panel. And you've also got traction control settings in full traction control as you'd expect. The car will control how much power is getting into the wheels. It will control wheel spin using the ABS system to activate braking to any wheel that starts to spin a little bit. In partial mode, you get a little bit of chatter at the wheels. You can actually get the tail out if you really try. And if you turn the traction control totally off, yes, you can burn some rubber. That's what it's all about. So you can configure this machine in the way that you would expect to have from a performance car, but still get all the benefits of the long range. Something they've got really sorted with this car is the ride and handling. So many modern cars these days are very stiff and wooden. You don't get much feeling and feedback through the corner. That's just not the case with this because they've allowed weight transfer. So that's how the tire develops grip. And as a driver, it means that your inputs are measured with how the car takes a corner. You can manipulate it with the steering wheel. You can manipulate it with the brake and the throttle. You can time it. You get the rhythm of the car through the corner and balance it and trim it the way you should. And it's really phenomenal. You get a lot of feedback through the cars. You tip it in, the car leans, soaks up the energy, and you really feel like you're as one. It's very organic and intuitive to drive, and quite surprising because in such a modern vehicle like this, it's really futuristic to have old school principles like driver input being at the top of that pyramid. It's fantastic, and it's so rewarding. This drive here, Skyline Boulevard and Santa Cruz Mountains, they do a lot of they do a lot of development up here. The guys will come up and they'll test the prototypes on these roads. It's in their DNA to produce a car that can make the most of sections of road like this. We will get the benefit of that. My favorite thing is the brakes. The brakes are servo assisted, not fly-by-wire, so it's not a dead pedal. You've got a really, really strong feeling under your foot. You're totally in control, even with the regenerative braking, assisting that deceleration. You're pinpointing how much speed you take into the corner. It's so critical from a driver's perspective that you're in charge of that. And even with the throttle, because you do know when you get to the bottom of the battery, you're gonna start running out of juice, you're gonna lose some energy. But up until that point, you can be really, the fidelity in this pedal is really fantastic. So you know how much power you've got under your foot. And in the case of the sprint mode, 1,050 horsepower, you need to be quite disciplined how much you use it. Because when you do get the power on, it does this. And it accelerates really, really fast. The suspension can adjust itself up to 500 times a second by taking into account things like steering angle, your control, the throttle application, or the brake. The amazing thing though is you never feel it at work. It's totally unobtrusive, but all it's doing all the time is to make sure you've got maximum grip in all conditions. What it does mean though, is when the going gets tough, this thing really gets to work and it's an absolute beast when things get slippery. So in the rain and snow and dust, this car really starts digging. A quick summary of statistics again on this car. Zero to 60 in two and a half seconds. 446 miles of range. Now, I'm not driving very conservatively, so I won't make that kind of range in the way I'm driving today. But I've been doing enough time in this car to know that it is faithful. You can achieve those kind of figures. It's not like a lot of other cars that for every mile you drive, you lose two on the range figure. This one is much more accurate. So you can really believe in what you're doing. I think that's what makes this a game changer. The big range and the performance packed into one system it means you can enjoy the car on a daily basis and all the other accoutrements you get in this. I mean, I'm not someone who normally dives into the boot and the you get in this. I mean, I'm not someone who normally dives into the boot and the bonnet to have a look at how much storage space you've got, but this is quite spacious. Passengers in the back, they're gonna be happy. You can throw all your kit in there, you're gonna be happy, and the drive on the way is gonna be phenomenal. 
Taken as a whole, this car really is a game changer from the phenomenal range to the stonking power output. And above all for me, the road holding that really cinches it together, brings it home as a driver. And I think it sets the mark very high for the others to chase. So the battle for EV supremacy is truly game on. Game set and match really at the moment to Lucid. So let's see what happens next.